Hey mamas, birth is so important to prepare for and I fully believe that it impacts the way women approach motherhood. But preparation for motherhood should not stop with the birth experience. Another big change that first time mamas experience is breastfeeding and along with those changes sometimes come challenges for mama and baby to overcome. And one of the most common obstacles that mama and baby has to overcome is baby's latch. And so in this video I'm going to be giving you the whole process to help you get a great latch for a wonderful breastfeeding experience. I'm Bridget and I'm a birth doula in the San Francisco Bay Area and I love helping moms love their birth. If you've been on the search for tips and tools for an empowered birth, Birth and motherhood. I'm so glad that you're here. You've come to the right place, but make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. So mamas, if you're watching this video, you're probably pregnant and trying to prepare yourself and educate yourself for your breastfeeding journey to begin, or you're already breastfeeding and maybe hitting a wall of discouragement or discomfort or frustration because things aren't really getting any easier for you. If that's you, I am so glad that you're here because by the end of this video, you're going to have several tips and tools to help you have the courage and strength to try again for your breastfeeding journey. So let's get started. So let's start off with the basics and start off with a little positivity. How do I know if it's a good latch with my baby? So first of all, the most obvious one that you've got a good latch is that you're not experiencing pain throughout your nursing session. Now, if you are a first time mom beginning um, your breastfeeding journey and you've never done it before, then you might experience some discomfort at the beginning of your nursing session, but if it's a good latch, that isn't going to continue throughout the whole time. It might just be an initial discomfort and then it'll go away. Another indicator that you have a good latch is that your baby is able to empty your breast easily. So most of the time you're going to experience enlargement at the beginning as your milk drops and comes into the breast and as your baby drinks more and more, it kind of like deflates a little bit um, and that just shows that your baby is stimulating milk well and then is able to express it from your breast easily. And lastly, if baby is gaining enough weight and wetting plenty of diapers, that is a really, really good indicator that baby's got a good latch and is getting enough milk from you. Now, if you've got a poor latch, some symptoms of that might be sore nipples throughout the whole nursing session, whereas, you know, if it's a good latch, you might experience some discomfort at the beginning of the nursing session, but prolonged discomfort throughout through, while you're nursing your baby um, usually means that there's a problem with the latch. You know, maybe because of that, you're getting sore, cracked, bleeding nipples. That's usually an indicator that baby's latch isn't quite deep enough, um, and so they're really just sucking and tugging and biting at the nipple, which is causing a a lot of irritation which is causing those cracked or bleeding nipples that you might be experiencing. Another symptom of having a poor latch is if baby unlatches from your breast and you notice kind of like a lipstick shaped nipple where it's kind of like pointed like this um, and it's not just how the, the shape that it started out as, that's a good indicator that baby is sucking more on the nipple and pulling at it at a strange way instead of having their mouth completely around the areola so that they're sucking and gumming at the areola and not just the nipple. Also, if baby unlatches and you notice any kind of discoloration in the nipple, that's also an indicator that baby doesn't have the best latch. Um, usually what happens with that is that, you know, before you start nursing, your nipple is that flesh color, but as baby drinks and then unlatches, you notice that your nipple is white and that is called vasospasm and that's where baby baby is, their latch is cutting off circulation to the nipple and so it causes um, that white it causes all the blood to like not go to the nipple and causes that whiteness. Um, and usually after you're done nursing, you're gonna notice like that stinging or just uncomfortableness in your nipple because your baby hasn't had the greatest latch. Also, one indicator of baby not having the best latch, maybe you're not experiencing a lot of pain and discomfort, but you notice that baby is making clicking sounds or you can really hear like a lot of noise when baby drinks, then that might be a, an indicator to you that, hey, maybe baby doesn't have the best latch because yes, babies can drink loudly, but there shouldn't really be any clicking sounds. And if you hear that, that usually means a suction is breaking um, pretty often throughout the nurse. Um, and that is an indicator that they don't have the best latch for you. So oftentimes the result of all of these symptoms of having a poor latch is that baby often comes off the breast feeling fussy and, and that's often because they are not full from the breast because they're not emptying the breast effectively um, and efficiently so that they're getting full at it and kind of like that sleepy, which is what you want. So if you notice 
Honest Baby is just really fussy even after they fed. It might be, you know, a warning sign or a red flag that, hey, maybe there's something wrong with the latch and they're not getting adequate milk. So those are all good ways to know whether or not you have a good or a poor latch, but you're all here to know how to get a good latch for your baby, so let's hop into that right now. The first step in getting a good latch for your baby is to make sure that you are feeding them at the right time. And a great time to start feeding them is when they are in this state called the quiet alert stage. So if you've never had a baby before and you're starting to panic a little bit because you're like, I don't know what this quiet alert stage is. Like, how am I going to know if my baby is ready to eat or not? Don't worry. Baby oftentimes will give you these feeding cues that I'm about to share with you so that you can be on the lookout to see if baby is telling you, hey, I'm ready to eat now. So some of these feeding cues are they'll be giving you more eye contact, they'll be doing little like head bobs, they'll be trying to find things to suck on, they're going to be licking their lips or you know just searching for a breast maybe. Those are all good cues that show you, hey, my baby is ready to eat. The reason why it's important to be looking out for baby's feeding cues is because if you wait too long and baby is getting overly hungry, they're going to get distressed and then you're going to have to calm them down before you can feed them and sometimes that can disrupt the latching process. Now before we go on, I do want to mention that sometimes you're going to have to wake baby up from their sleep in order to feed them. So, you know, they might not necessarily be giving you those feeding cues that you are on the lookout for. Um, and so if that's the case, I'm going to give you tips in a little bit in this video, so make sure you are listening to those. Um, but I do understand that sometimes baby isn't going to be giving you those cues, um, but we will cover that in a little bit. So now let's move on to different positions that you guys can use while breastfeeding and it kind of depends on your style um, and what you find most comfortable. It's kind of trial and error at the beginning to see what works for you. What works for one mama might not work for the other, but I'm going to be sharing you a lot of positions that you can be using to start off your breastfeeding journey. I have little baby Joey here that I named after my favorite friend's character. So he's going to be helping me show you some breastfeeding positions. So first of all, mama, there are different positions that you can be holding baby, and one of them is called the cradle hold, and that's when baby's head is just fit nicely into the nook of your arm, into the, you know, the crease of your elbow, and that way you just have them resting on you, and they're right there at your breast height. The other hold that you can do with your baby is the cross cradle hold, and that's where you are supporting their head from behind like their ears. So you have your hand around their neck and um, a little bit behind their head as well. And I really like this hold because it allows you to have this hand free if you need to do any compression to fit the nipple in your mouth or <laughs> in their mouth. Um, and it just allows you to have a little bit more mobility. There's also the football hold where you have baby nicely tucked to the side of you just like this. And this is a good little hold, um, especially if you've had a C-section where putting pressure on um, your abdomen with one of these front holds is not comfortable. So if you've had a C-section, um, maybe try doing the football hold. And this is good too, so that you can really see baby's mouth and if they are aligned with your nipple, if you're having a difficulty with your latch, so that you can really help guide their um, mouth to your breast. So there are other breastfeeding positions that you can use. There's a lying down position that I love. Um, but if you are having a difficult time with establishing your breastfeeding routine because you're having, um, you know, your baby's having a difficult time latching, then I would use these, um, these positions at first just so that you're able to get a good idea of how breastfeeding works and then you're going to be able to transition into other positions that might be more comfortable for you but at first I would try out these three positions. Once you have a position that you're comfortable with you want to make sure that the rest of your body is relaxed. So a lot of times what I see moms doing and that I did too when I first started breastfeeding is that you're supporting your baby a lot with your shoulders and that's just going to create a lot of tension in your neck and in your upper back. And so what you want to do is that you want to make your shoulders nice and relaxed. And if that's hard to do, you want to make sure that you have pillows nearby that you can support your arms with so that you can let those shoulders relax to make sure that you're not getting a lot of tension in your neck and upper back. Once you're all positioned, it's time to position baby. And the first thing that I want you to focus on is getting your baby tummy to tummy with you. So a lot of times what I see new moms doing is feeding, trying to breastfeed their babies like this. And I want you to imagine 
trying to drink anything like a smoothie or anything out of a straw and turning your head while doing it. And that's going to be that's going to be pretty hard. And so imagine a baby who's face up turning their head to drink from the breast. It's going to be a lot harder for them to one uh, get that latch and two for them just to be able to drink comfortably. So what you want to make sure you're doing is bringing baby in so their tummy is facing your tummy. And then the next thing that I want you to focus on is making sure that their body is aligned, okay? If baby is like all over the place, it's going to be a lot harder. So you want to make sure that their head is at your breast, that their nose is to your nipple, that their ear, shoulder, and their legs are nicely aligned in this like straight position so that it makes it a lot easier for you and for them to get that good latch. Another common thing that I see mamas do is that when they are trying to get their baby to latch, they stretch their breast out to the baby. You wanna make sure that you are bringing your baby in nice and tight to your boobs so that you aren't stretching, stretching your nipple out to them, but that they are coming in to the breast. So you've chosen your position. Let's say you are doing the cross cradle with your baby um, and you have them tummy to tummy with you. You have them, their head to your breast. You have their nose to their, their nose to your nipple and you have them nice, nicely aligned. Now it's time for them to open that mouth up nice and big to give you that great latch. So I said earlier that, you know, sometimes they're going to have to wake your baby up from their sleep in order to feed them. You know, maybe it's been three and a half hours, and so you know you need to get a nursing session in, but they're really tired, and so getting that good latch where they have a nice wide open mouth is going to be kind of tricky. Um, a good tip that I have for you is to stimulate their philanthrum, and your philanthrum is the skin between your nose and your upper lip. It's where you kind of have those ridges right above your lip, and so if you just stimulate that, that's going to help them give you a nice wide mouth to begin that latch. Now if you see that your baby has a nice wide mouth and you see your moment of opportunity, what I want you to do first of all is just to try taking their wide mouth and just shoving it onto that nipple. And hopefully, you know, with that wide mouth and that quick shove while they're have it while they have that big gaping mouth, that will help them suction over enough of the areola to give you a good laugh. So if baby still isn't opening their mouth as wide as you would like to get that nice good latch, it's a good idea to try compressing your breast with your hand to help fit as much of the breast in their mouth as possible. So what I mean by compressing the breast is that you want to use your hand in a little C-shape depending on where the baby is angled at to kind of sandwich or hamburger your breast in your hand. And if you think of like a big Subway sandwich or a big double, triple cheeseburger sandwich with all the goods inside um, and it's too big for your mouth, you squeeze it down to be able to you know, fully put that nice yummy burger in your mouth. So that's what you wanna do with your breast, okay? Your breast is the hamburger for your baby and you wanna compress it so that baby is able to get enough of the breast in their mouth to help them get that good latch. So when you are compressing your breast, you either wanna do it from the side like this or you can go under the breast a little bit and compress it this way depending on the angle of the baby. And the reason why I really like the cross cradle hold for this is because you're able to support baby while also um, helping your breast out a little bit by having a free hand to do those, those compressions, that C-shaped compression to fit babies or to fit your breast into baby's mouth. So once you've got that good compression, that nice hamburger breast going on, you can point your nipple up at baby's mouth. Remember, this is if they don't have that super wide mouth to put onto your breast. And so if they aren't having that wide mouth, you can point your nipple at the top of their lip. And so as they open their mouth, it'll roll in and that way it'll rest in their mouth as they close on for that good suction. So by now, if either, you know, baby's had a nice wide mouth and so you've just been shoving them kind of into the nipple to see if they get that good latch with their wide mouth or if you've had to do those compressions and roll your nipple starting at the top lip into their mouth you probably have some sort of latch right now and so at this point it's really important that you check to make sure that their lips are nice and flanged outward. So how do you know if your baby has nicely flanged lips? You kind of want to look for either like duck ish lips or fish lips where their lips are nice and like puckered around the areola. A lot of times babies 
will have their lip stuck under in the bottom. So it'll just be kind of like like that and you'll notice um, that you'll see like one lip above and then like no bottom lip and so if that happens to you you can just like gently tug at their chin um, and a lot of times that'll just pop the lip out nicely and they'll be able to fish lips around the areola. So once you have stuck baby onto the breast, you know, with that wide latch or you've rolled your nipple into the baby's mouth, you've gotten that good latch with their lips flanged out, it's now time to position baby. So a lot of times if baby isn't pulled in tightly enough, their nose is going to be too close to the breast and it'll make it difficult for them to breathe. So what you want to do if you have this cross cradle, you can keep holding that um, and tuck them, tuck their bottom nicely into um, your, the side of your body, nicely onto uh, your tummy or you can transfer them into that cross or to that cradle hold get nice and get nice uh, and supported under your arm and make sure that their booty is nice and close to your belly so that it pulls their nostril away from the breast so that they're able to breathe freely but what if you've done all that and you still have a poor latch what you can do is kind of fish hook the baby's lip a little bit and pull it up to break the suction. You never want to rip baby off the breast, especially if you already have sore or cracked nipples. That's only going to make matters worse. So you want to break the suction first. And one of the best ways that I found is just to, like I said, kind of fish hook baby's lip. So it breaks the suction and then pull them off and then try again. It might take one or two more times to do this whole process and get that good latch. It might take 12 more times, but mama, it's going to be worth it if at the end of it, you get a good latch for your baby and you get to experience that beautiful moment of breastfeeding and that bonding that you get to share with your baby. So I promise you, mama, it's worth all the work that you do. Now, mama, if you've done all the steps and you think you got a good latch, but you're still experiencing discomfort, I would encourage you to wait anywhere between 30 and 60 seconds into your nursing session to see if the pain subsides. Because like I said at the beginning, mamas, if this is your first time breastfeeding, there's a lot going on that, you know, you haven't experienced before. And so you're your breasts, your nipples are adjusting as well, just like you are, just like your baby is. And so, you know, maybe it's just skin irritation more than it is a bad latch. And so give it some time. If the pain subsides, yay, congratulations, you've gotten that great latch. Um, and that irritation will go away once your, your skin kind of adjusts to having a baby drink from your breasts all the time. Um, and if you are still experiencing pain, then remember you want to do that fish hook, break that suction, and then try again, mama. Like I just said, it's so worth putting this work in to get that beautiful bonding experience of breastfeeding your baby. Mama, I so hope that walking you through this process of getting a good latch has been helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please write them down below. I would love to be able to get feedback from you to help answer any questions or to help you get any resources or tools that you need during your breastfeeding journey. Thanks for being with me in this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, mamas.